Hello folks, welcome back for a new part uh, with a little bit of more progress with my little uh, high gain tube amp. First of all, I, I gave it a name because I was uh, sending a picture of this amplifier to a friend of mine and uh, when she say, when she saw the picture, she said, well, that looks like a, like a bomb. And uh, I said, well, tick, 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 tick. And she said, exactly. So that's why I was thinking about a cool name for it. I don't know if my camera can focus it. Not this one. This is my probably my manufacturer name, but it's called Time Bomb. So it's it's called Time Bomb, and probably you could also imagine if this thing would be sent back in the 1930s, the way of music would drastically change. Probably <laughs> Slayer and Exodus would have started uh, pre Second World War with such a sound. <laughs> So, <laughs> who knows? I mean, that that's also makes nice, uh, rather than from the look, it makes nice uh, suggestion why this thing is called now Time Bomb. Yeah, and a uh, few things w uh, that I did inside. I was trying to, first of all, I made a stellar um, breakthrough with the sound, so the muddiness is really gone. And uh, I made a, let me see, I have it here. Oops, uh, yeah, so I made a circuit diagram. And um, mainly what I changed is um, around these uh, cathode bypass capacitors. Initially I had 2.2 microfarad and that was still too much. And uh, finally I changed it down to 470 uh, nanofarad. Um, oh, here is this, still it's not a 22. I tried even higher values, but it's also 470 only on the search gain stage this one is i don't know i forgot i think it's 40, 47 that doesn't matter because the, the sound is mainly built in these two tubes and they are very sensitive of having uh, too much uh too large capacitors both here and here and here and uh, here so it's um if you if you want a uh, gain sound and uh, almost no muddiness and it's a wise idea to put these uh, values to very low uh, figures. And to test this out, I made something like a cascade with uh, six capacitors and also with six, um, let's see, can you see this here? Six capacitors and with uh, six electrolytic capacitors uh, with different values. So I just plug it, I just plug this then to a part in the circuit and then I just switch from one capacitor to another capacitor to see how the effect is and that helped me pretty much uh, I think the values here are from 1 nanofarad to uh, 100 nan 220 nanofarad and electrolytic capacitors are similar ranges in microfarad and that really helped me to detect um, and to immediately switch while I'm playing to switch between different uh, Values and of course I also use my my trustworthy oscilloscope to check the sound on the fly. Uh, but this muddiness is really hard to detect on the oscilloscope. You only would hear it. And uh, then I was trying, I was working on, also on um, a bit on the hum and the static. And what I did is, oops, it's heavy. I remember we had this bias. Uh, sorry, we had this gain pot here in the front that on, I now changed from the position very much to the back side so that uh, the signal from 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 this tube, from the input tube, is now going a very short way only through this red capacitor here. You see this 10 nanofarad capacitor, it goes straightly to this gain potentiometer and from there it straightly feeds into the second tube. I'm still not 100% clear about the quality of this white wire here if it's a good one or a bad one. It is shielded. Yes But uh, I, I feel it still catches some static. So what I will Probably try is to work with another shielded cable I usually I use these red ones which are bigger and I think they have a better shielding Anyway, so but now this thing here is, is, is quite nice and uh, the hum is a little bit reduced. I also worked a bit on the uh, grounding concept of that amplifier. Try to improve a little bit here and there from this, uh, well you could call it distributed star ground. Um, yeah, but that is still not final. 
And uh, but just to give you now an idea how this amplifier sounds, I'm really happy now with it because all the muddiness is gone. And just give me a second, I will just put my camera on the stand and then on the tripod and then uh, I'll just riff a bit. So, right, cameras mounted on the stand. And once again, this amplifier shall work uh, with a 4x12 cabinet. And so it's connected to my trustworthy JCM 800 1960 straight cabinet, which is uh, once again 16 ohm and the output transformer is still not the right uh, output transformer. I got the order confirmation for this Fender Grand Tone stack uh, that is, has been shipped and um, soon I will get it. But first I'm going on vacation and um, after that I will probably give you some examples of the new sound. So, once again, this little transformer here is more for 3 or 4 ohms cabinet, maybe even smaller. Don't worry, it still sounds, it still sounds pretty amazing to me. So, let's start. Especially these palm mutes are really now very nice. Uh, I don't hear any muddiness from that. try to fight this. What I like to show you as well is, um, is I put the parts of the signal on the oscilloscope here. So I need to extend my tripod a bit to show you that one. Check, check, check. So. So the upper signal is um, the signal on the unload. Ah, hallelujah, complicated. So I tried to show the plan. So I'm checking the first signal is here, right behind the unload, behind this coupling capacitor. And the second one is uh, right behind the tone stack where you really see that the signal is pretty much shaped already. And there I can also show how the uh, now even more improved uh, tone stack is uh, working on that. So let's have a look on the signals. Um. We can see it's the first signal is almost a square wave uh, with still some slopes on the 
uh, on the rising and falling edges so that I try to, to tune a bit um, and the output of the tone stack looks then really wild with a lot of uh, overtones and spikes <laughs> These spikes are responsible for for making for making this really bright aggressive tone because if I turn down the treble now you see there are no, no none of these spikes or overshooters. And also the bass. Uh, this oops, uh, this slowly rising edge is the the bass notes. can also tune pretty much I'm still not too happy about the center frequency but taking away all the mids So that's that what I wanted to show you quickly before I now go on a vacation to Germany for a few days and after that um, I will still install I will put this thing here into the cap because this cap is currently disconnected and because I had to try a little bit with the grid stopper and the grid leak uh, resistors so I tried to make to get uh, sensible values here and uh, this I could not do in the cap right now and later I will solder these two resistors in the cap here we have the same let me switch it off and show it to you but this is safe to touch because um, uh, this carries only grid voltage of one, two, three volts. So here I have grid resistors and uh, leak, uh, grid leakage resistors inside. Here's only a grid stopper inside 68K. And I took out this tube because uh, at the moment I, it's, it's more for, for beautifying the whole thing, but it just uh, irritates me whenever I, I work on this amplifier. And also it carries more high tension than these tubes. So I just uh, put it out. Uh. All right, so I'm pretty happy actually about the progress of sound here with this little beast. And uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, there will be probably one or two more uh, parts uh, when the new output transformer is inside and then probably one of the final amp uh, when I can give a full demonstration. All right, once again, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.